For nearly 250 years, visitors have been coming to this property and the history of the Greenbrier is an amazing story with more twists and turns than a West Virginia mountain road. Today we have with us Dr. Bob Conti, the Greenbrier historian who has done an amazing job documenting and keeping the history of the Greenbrier alive. Dr. Conti, thank you so much for being here today. Hi Jennifer, pleased to meet you. Yes, it's so nice to meet you too. <laughs> So Dr. Conti, what first drew visitors here to this property and how has it evolved from then to now? Well, right behind us, uh, under that spring house, is the White Sulphur Spring. That explains the origin of this resort. When we say people have been coming here since 1778, that's what they were going to. Okay. So they're going up to the springs, they would have said, to take the waters, drink or bathe in the water, to restore their health. Like the spas of Europe, you know, we were continuing a tradition that goes back thousands of years in Europe. So with the resort the way it is, what, what has kept, in your opinion, the most uniqueness of the Greenbrier alive? Well, simply that we've been here so long that we start out almost 250 years ago, and this is still right in the middle of the resort. People all the time go back and forth from the hotel to the golf club. They're walking right by the spring. We've maintained a lot of the cottages. You know, the resort develops pretty much from here uh, towards where the hotel is today. There are cottages on the hill right behind us here that go back to the 1830s. You know, this is one of the most historic properties in America. And it has that unique history that a lot of people don't know about. So can you highlight some of the yeah. history that's around the property, <laughs> in the property? You, you know, sometimes I think of this 19th century history as the invisible history. Uh, people, people think the Greenbrier, we're going to the Greenbrier. Well, when the Greenbrier was built in 1913, we'd already been here for 100 years. There was 100 years of, uh, of a history of this is a great, the great southern summer social resort. People coming up here to take the waters. Uh, it was only open in the summer in the 19th century. It's cooler up here, up in the mountains. Uh, we're at 2,000 feet. And this lawn surrounding us here was the great social gathering spot. So all sorts of important people from throughout the country were up here talking business, talking politics, talking marriage. This was sort of a romantic resort, maybe something of a marriage mart throughout the 19th century. So it starts out of the cottages, many of which are still here. There was a hotel before the Green Bar, the, the old white. Uh, uh, that stood right next to the current hotel. And this evolved into a very large resort. This is actually a bigger resort. We could accommodate more people 135 years ago uh, than we do today. So in the early days, how did people get to this property? Well, back before the Civil War, we're talking stagecoach. Long trip, three days from Washington, D.C. And you know, one of the most important things that ever happened in the history of the Greenbrier is that they built a railroad right across the street. And that happened in 1870, right after the Civil War. And then for a hundred years, everybody comes here by, by rail. And that helps explain why the old Chesapeake and Ohio Railway bought this property in 1910. And then they built the Greenbrier that people think of today. What they did, if the central part of the property where we are right now was already here, they built on both sides. So they start building the Greenbrier Hotel in 1913. And then in 1914, right over here, uh, they build a golf course. They build the old white course. And that's pretty much the lay of the land today. The hotel's way bigger. There's more golf. There's more tennis. But the basic footprint of the property is a uh, big hotel, big lawn surrounded by cottages, uh, sports facilities. That's pretty much been in place for uh, 100 years now. And then the railroad's going to own it for, uh, uh, for 99 years. And boy, those years back before the Second World War, that was really the, the, the heyday of rail passenger service people coming here from New York and Philadelphia and Detroit and Chicago. I mean, Joseph and Rose Kennedy honeymooned here in 1914, get on a train in Boston, get off right across the street. And then golf, of course, is a big, a big issue back then, a major draw. Charles Blair McDonald designs the old white course. Sam Snead becomes the pro here in the late 1930s. And really, for a whole generation of golfers, if you say the Green Bar, they say Sam Snead. If you say Sam Snead, they say the Green Bar. I mean, really, I can't overstate how important Sam Snead's long connection to the Green Bar has been. So with the history of this place, it was not always a resort. Right, there was, was a break. In the Second World War, uh -huh. uh, the Green Bar was uh, first used to intern enemy alien diplomats, Japanese, uh, German, and Italian diplomats for six months at the beginning of the war. And then it served as an army hospital for four years. For, for four years, this wasn't the Greenbrier. This was Ashford General Hospital. So it was a 2,000 bed hospital in 
almost 25,000 soldiers were admitted and treated here uh, during, uh, during that period uh, for four years. So the railroad actually sold the grain bar to the Army. The Army used it for four years, uh, and then they, then they sold it back to the railroad in 1946. That's how Dorothy Draper enters the story. So for many people, the Green Bar is Dorothy Draper. And the reason she came here was the building had taken a beating. You know, there was a war going on. They didn't maintain it as a luxury resort. Uh, and so it needed to be redecorated uh, after the Army left. So she arrives in 1946 and spends almost two years totally redoing the entire hotel, the public areas, the cottages. We, we were draperized, as they used to say there back in the, in the 1940s. And that company still decorates the Green Bar. It's, sort of, it's remarkable that there's been one company, two people, that have decorated the Green Bar and all the cottages and the employees' uniforms and the china for over uh, 70 years now. So the Green Bar reopens in 1948. Uh, Sam Snead is at his peak as the golf pro. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor you know, are coming here. It's a very cosmopolitan period there in the, in the 1950s. And then the government comes back in the late 50s with an interesting proposal. How's about we build a bunker on your property? Uh, and to some degree, I think that sort of follows the fact that there had been an army hospital. There had been a relationship during the Second World War. So the government started this, something called the Continuity of Government program, and they needed a facility to move Congress. They were going to move Congress from Washington to this emergency relocation center, uh, which they built here at the Greenbrier. 1959, 1960, and 1961. And uh, this was part of a larger program, uh, uh, assuming there was some sort of war, a Cold War, with the, uh, the Cold War turns hot with the Soviet Union. And then for 30 years, from 1962 to 1992, the Greenbrier was quite literally a resort with a secret mission, uh, with one phone call from the right person in the government to the right person at the railroad that owned the Greenbrier, the whole Green Bar would have turned over to government, uh, 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 government occupation, and they would have moved Congress down here and continued to function as the legislative branch of the federal government. So in 2009, for the first time in 100 years, the Green Briar received new ownership. So how has it changed since then? Yes, really, a whole new, a whole new era begins. You know, we've been corporately owned for all that time, and you know now one individual owns it and has a chance to stamp his. Uh, personality on it. Well, the very first thing he did was, was uh, build that casino. You know, he bought it in May of 2009, and by August of 2009, we're having a ceremony out front digging the first uh, shovel full. Mr. Justice likes to get things done, and uh, they built that casino in 10 months, and uh, which is a remarkable, remarkable uh, period of time, 100,000 square feet. So really, uh, since Mr. Justice bought it, that's, I think, the single most a dramatic change uh, uh, that's added not only the casino, uh, but the shops down there and the restaurants down there. Uh, and, and then, of course, since then, he's built the chapel, this wonderful chapel right next to where we're sitting uh, back in 2015. You know, this has always been a sort of a romantic resort, so it really, it really kind of plays on that. Uh, people used to honeymoon here, now they get married here. I guess they get married and honeymoon here. So the beautiful chapel was built uh, in 2015, the same year as a new tennis facility uh, right behind us here, uh, center court at, uh, at Creekside. Uh, the sports performance center across the street where we've, we've hosted the New Orleans Saints and the Houston, Texas doing their summer camps here during, uh, uh, during July and August. Uh, and then the Green Bar Classic, that golf tournament that went on for a good 10 years that really focused a great light on, the, on not only on the Green Bar, but on the whole state of West Virginia. Wow, well, I know we could sit here and talk for hours, if right. not days, about your experience personally, as well as just the history of this beautiful place. Dr. Conti, if people want to look up more information, where do they go for that? Well, there's an extraordinarily well-written book called The History of the Green Briar. That I would certainly suggest that you might do that. Actually, I do a Facebook uh, page called the, uh, the Green Briar History Group. Uh, when they get here, we do tours all the time. Certainly not only tours of the bunker, but tours of, uh, tours of the ground. And there's a lot of information to learn uh, to truly appreciate the Green Briar, and we're happy to share it uh, any chance we get.